Frick! What happened to Claudia? What happened to Cobot? What happened to all those other characters? What happened to the CN schedule? Well, I guess we're deviating. Screw it, man. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace, and this is a Tower of Fantasy video. We're going to be talking about Freak today. We're going to be evaluating her. We'll be evaluating her based on what we know on the current content creator betas. Because if I hop over to this one over here, you see Freak. You see she is a CN exclusive. I will talk about which of these skills are going to be different and whether you should pull or not for her ultimately. If you want to TLDR as to whether you should pull for her, then yes, you should pull for her. Okay, I mean, you can click away now, but if you want to know why, then I guess stick around. And so Freak is going to be dropping on September 1st, and what is consistent is that she is going to be an ice attacker, as you can see over here. She has a pretty decent shatter and charge stat, however, as most of you should probably know by now, not to actually trust these statistics. Moving through, we have the weapon effects, and what I want to say is that this is probably the place where she is going to change the most, where the CN bros don't have it, which is why it's going to change our meta, but not their meta. And if you guys no nemesis because if you guys didn't know nemesis uh, that'd be kind of weird considering she is like essentially the post girl for the game she has the vault resonance what I'm saying is that Frigg, although it's not showing up over here, she is going to have the Frost Resonance. And again, all of this information is just information that I've heard in the grassroots from the content creators, from like their beta clients, stuff like that. And therefore, the information in this video is only going to be applicable if all of these things hold true. If they decide to change it or nerf it or whatever, man, Frigg, I'm going to be a clown. But you guys can clown on me after they actually release her. And so yes, for the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that Frigg is going to have Frost Resonance and she is going to give 15% frost attack and 25% frost resistance to her entire party, activated by equipping two or more frost weapons. That in itself is already massive. And you know what's even more massive? The fact that she is actually DPS resonance. And what that means is that you can run her as an attacker. You can run the double DPS for the DPS role. That's not to say that you can't actually do that with Nemesis well, because she's a support, right? But what it does mean is that if, for example, you're running like a healer comp and you want to do the ice element, you kind of want to run Frigg, the Baomong, for that resonance. Generally speaking though, this is actually really, really good because we do want to move towards like the Giga DPS comps. And if you guys don't know why, go check out my team building comp for like the 12 characters instead of the four. I will link it in the description or something. So yeah, again, based on some of the rumors, it's gonna be Frost Resonance for this guy over here. Frozen Domain, apparently, 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 we're still gonna be getting Frozen Domain. I kind of doubt that, but honestly, that would actually be like kind of Giga cracked. My opinion is that the Frost Resonance is going to replace the frozen domain, but who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe we'll get both. That would be, uh, that'd be like you know, giga, giga crack, triple S plus. So let's quickly talk about her star advancements and if they are actually worth going for. Spoiler alert: If you're free to play, it's probably not worth going for any of these. Gain one frostiness point every time you receive 550% frost attack of damage in the frozen domain. With the frost points, you can gain up to 10. Now, when the frost domain ends, you will have the frostiness points times frost attack times 95%. So this is just a multiplier based on how much frost attack you have. For example, like you can see in the character screen, you have like, oh, 2,395 or something frost attack. Multiply that by the frostiness points and then multiply by 95%. That is going to get you the skill damage for this C1. And then essentially, you're going to be doing a big AOE damage to all enemies within the frost domain. Now look, it's good. It's good. It's decent. It's just extra DPS is the best way that I can put it. The thing about this and like every constellation or star or whatever you want to call it is that it's not bad. It's just that it's not as good as it could be. For example, if I look at this one here, your frostiness limit is increased to 15, and then you're also dealing like a whole bunch more damage whenever you are discharging skills of frost weapons. What this means is that this is actually applicable to all frost weapons, not just Frigg's only thing over here. And so you can see what I mean, right? Like the value of this C3 is just really, really freaking high. And honestly, the C6 is even better because when you reach 15 frost points while inside the ice field, for C6, you will just straight up gain apparently 25%, but I'm telling you that it's going to be nerfed. It's going to be nerfed down to 12%. And so because it's nerfed to 12%, whilst it's really, really freaking giga good, this is certainly giga whale territory. And so what star advancement would I recommend you guys get? I reckon C0, to be honest. I reckon, especially if you're a free-to-play player, C0 is fantastic. I know a lot of people went for the nemesis, went for the C1 nemesis, and, and honestly, this is actually incredibly good. However, in the context of like a DPS, 
DPS. There is not any like extra utility here. You're getting a little bit more DPS and that's kind of it. Instead, you could save that extra like C or the extra pulls you would have put in to get the C or the star and put it towards another character like Saki or like Lin or whoever, right? And so yeah, TLDR, you know, obviously more stars is good. These are all fantastic stars. It's just that especially if you're free to play, especially with resource management with like limited resources and red pulls, I don't know about you guys, but I'm broke as shit. I would advise just going for a C0 Baomang. Moving on, we've got her attack chains. They have a little bit of minor knockback. We've got some knockdown on the fifth chain. And then moving through, her kit is very much like a standard DPS. The majority is going to be like damage, damage, damage. And considering that is what she is, remember guys, she is a DPS unit. And so what I do want to talk about a little bit more is the Fimble Winter, the skill, as well as the discharge. So with Fimble Winter, we have a new mechanic called damage immunity. Essentially, it is the opposite of CC immunity, where CC immunity means that you can't get hit by CC, so you can't be stunned, frozen, or whatever, but you can still take damage. This is the inverse of that. You can not take damage, but you can still get CC'd and all of that. So what this means is that you should definitely treat this as more of like a shield, more like Zero's shield, right? So for example, you see the Meryl is doing the spin to win. You could use the Fimble Winter to get the damage immunity to actually cancel out some of that spin to win because you know that the Meryl spin to win does not actually do any CC. So you are completely negating everything there. The other nice thing is that it suspends and launches targets, which is a little bit of CC. And then after you actually use the skill, you will form a large frost domain. Now this part is actually pretty cracked out. The number of dodges you can perform will not be deducted when you perform the Baomang dodge within the frost domain. I don't know about you guys, man, but <laughs> I can't wait to see all the abusers, dude. And then on top of that, you're going to gain increased shatter by 25% when using a frost weapon. That is what I really, really want to emphasize. The, the parts with the frost weapon are what makes units like Frigg so freaking good. She is a good generalist for all frost people. And then moving through to the discharge skill, clear all debuffs from the user, which is with everybody. And then what happens here is that you dash forward upon switching to the weapon, temporarily controlling opponents in an area before unleashing a giant slash. And that is going to be like giga giga damage. And then on top of that, you're also going to be launching the enemies into the air. Now, this is really, really important for a lot of the kiting meta right now in PvP. I know that because she is a DPS unit, it doesn't seem like she would be really, really fit for PvP. But as I've pointed out like numerous times, I've shown you knocks down target. There is some CC in her kit. You you need to know when to use it, how to use it, and then hopefully you'll understand a little bit more in terms of her kit and how it fits into PvP. I'm pretty sure at this point, I've already convinced you guys for PvE, for like giga giga damage, for running those like domains, for running those raids or whatever, you are gonna want a Balma. The Frost Resonance that I'm claiming that Frigg is going to have is already making her a must pull. And then from here, I wanna quickly talk about Frigg's matrices. So you can see it's still in the China exclusive one, but what I can tell you, it's gonna kind of mimic the China to global changes for the Nemesis Matrix. What I'm really referring to is these ratios over here, 25% at max, 15% at min, global is going to go 8 up to 15. Frigg is probably going to get the same treatment, you know, just based on the rumors down at the grassroots. And so honestly, that's been kind of like nerfed a little bit too much for my liking. I would say that especially because Frigg is a DPS, you want to go with some of the more generalist DPS matrices. What do they recommend? It's probably going to be like a Samir or something. Yep, Samir right here. Samir two times. It is probably one of the best ones. It just stacks. It is going to work for everybody. I am not going to recommend rolling for the Frigg matrix. I'm going to recommend just juicing them up with the Samir ones. And so with that, let's start talking talking about team building a little bit. So we've got Frigg over here. If we do pull Frigg, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to pull Frigg, but if you pull Frigg. But for most of you who have been playing the game for a while, you'll know that Nemesis and Samir or Crow, they usually go together because they are all like the vault element. And then we've got Nemesis buffing the 15% attack. Samir and Crow are going to benefit. Very similar for Frigg. So therefore, who is the DPS that corresponds with Frigg? It's going to be Tsubasa and only Tsubasa for now. <laughs> and then with that, that is essentially going to be the core of your team. You've got your Frigg for the Resonance and then Tsubasa for the DPS. But in this kind of team where Nemesis down here, she is the support, right? Frigg up here is actually the DPS. So Tsubasa, you should be thinking about rotating her more as the damage support using the C1 to do the dodge arrow. I'm talking about this one up here when you can stack her sharp arrow up to 15% damage for 15 seconds. Or if you're a freaking madman and you go for like 25% damage for C6, you know what I mean? You can freaking do that. And that's actually pretty freaking viable. And so yeah, back at it with the team building, we've got the Frigg and the Tsubasa. If she is the support, the damage support, and Frigg is your main DPS, then who can you take for the rest? You could actually take anyone. You could freaking take a nemesis, to be honest, because she is going to be providing the heals to the team. Vault resonance, doesn't matter. I don't care. 
What you could do is you could take the Coco Ritter. However, I would say that in terms of pure healing, Coco is probably going to be better. But if you don't have a Coco like me, I only have a Nemesis, I'm certainly going to slot that Nemesis in. There is nothing wrong with a team looking like this. However, what if you are playing more open world and so healing isn't too much of an issue, I would probably play something like this, right? You got the Meryl with the Frig, they are going to be getting the Frost Resonance and then you have the Shield Breaking. And it's just because I'm biased towards Shield Breaking. I just love Shield Breaking shit. That's, that's really it, man. This is completely viable. On the other hand, you could actually swap out the Huma and bring in the King. Now, the King is going to give you the double DPS, the Frig and the King, which means that you're actually optimizing for giga giga damage, right? Because you've got the DPS resonance as well as the Ice resonance between Frig and Meryl. And obviously, you're going to be spending most time in Frig and then rotating into Meryl's pretty long CD E skill to do a bit of damage to then ultimately swap out. If I was running domains, this is probably what I would be looking at. If you're playing like a co-op mode, which is purely, purely just focus on DPS, somebody else is going to heal you? Yeah, I'll probably look at something like this. Mm, actually, or something like this. If you do need the heals or the nemesis, I think the majority of you can already team build at this point. Hopefully, if you guys haven't watched the video, go watch the video. But essentially, the TLDR for this is that you have noticed I have not even touched Samir and Crow. And the reason for that is because we already have a main DPS in Frig. We don't need a Crow. We don't need a Samir. We don't need a Tsubasa if we're going to be using Tsubasa for the main attacker. I mean, you could if you do like Tsubasa. Or maybe it is something like where you got to go the range attack. And then so yeah, sure, you could be using your Tsubasa as your main DPS and then Frig as just, I don't know, swapping in skill and then swapping out. But yeah, the main idea is that Frig is not only offering the Frost Resonance, but she is also offering the DPS role. It's kind of like how for the Nemesis comp, it's quite unlikely you would run something like this or you would run something like this. You'd probably only run double healer like Nemesis Coco in PvP. Something like this for PvP, uh, what all of the GMs abuse right now. <laughs> but I'm sure by now you can kind of see the logic, right? Team loading is going to be freaking easy with Frig get it? And if you guys still don't get it, then let me know down in the comments below. We'll try to answer some questions. Regardless, the TLDR is that yes, you should roll for Frig because she is going to be a staple in essentially every ice team. However, there is one trap that I do want to kind of tell you about and it's like the people that are saying, oh, I have Nemesis. I'm therefore going to run the Lightning teams, the Vault teams for the rest of time. You can't do that because as you guys have already seen in some of the game modes like Wormhole, Void Rifts, stuff like that and more content in the future, there is going to be like those times where the game mode is going to be like, actually, your vault damage is going to get resisted by 50%. And so therefore, you're going to have to run an ice team. So at least, at least pick two elements. Two. Whether it do be your Nemesis and your Frig, or Nemesis and your Cobalt, or Nemesis and your Claudia, or your Claudia and your Cobalt, at least pick two. Best case scenario is probably three because there are some game modes that actually nullify two elements. All right, my guys, that's it for realsies. Let me know if you are going to be pulling for Frig down in the comments below. I'm still on the fence about it. You know, she kind of a babe, but Cobalt also kind of a babe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And on the other hand, if you did enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, and turning on that notification bell. However, as Frig once said, all good things must come to an end. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.